Hey y'all, it's Nick for Undefeated Production. As you guys see by the title, the Mets have gone out and made an absolutely massive move. The Mets have gone out and gotten Francisco Lindor and Carlos Carrasco from Cleveland in exchange for Ahmed Rosario, Andre Semenez, Josh Wolf, and Isaiah Green. Before we get started, as always, hit that like button, subscribe. It really helps us out here at Undefeated. And let me know in the comment section below what you guys think about this trade. Are you, what are you Indian fans thinking about this trade? You know, good trade, bad trade. All right, this trade. You know, uh, Francisco Lindor and Carlos Carrasco. Basically, Lindor is the highlight of this trade, top 10, you know, player in baseball. And for those that say that Lindor is not a top 10 player in baseball and is overrated, uh, there is one of you guys out there. You got to look at his role and just look at it a, a different way than you probably have before. Lindor. In 2020, this is why, you know, you look at him and think he's overrated. At 258 with eight home runs. Uh, and a 750 OPS, stole six bases, 27 RBIs. And for his career, Lindor is a 285 hitter. He's hit 138 home runs, stolen 99 bases. The first one with the Met will be career stolen base number 100 and has a career OPS of 833, and his career war is 28.7. In his career, Lindor uh, placed second in the rookie of year voting, was a four-time All-Star from 2016 to 2019, Placed top 15 in the MVP voting each year, won gold glove in 16 and 19, and won silver slugger in 17 and 18. Lindor's best year was probably 2018. He hit 277, 38 home runs, and 871 OPS. He, did, he walked 70 times, struck out 107 times, put him at an on base percentage of 352, and only had 92 RBIs. So, those are saying that RBIs is a big stat to look out for. You know, it's. It, it's it's his role on the Indians was a leadoff hitter. Just get on base. You know, power came with that role, and you know it's 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 something that also the Mets have been lacking. The Mets have lacked a true number one hitter. They put McNeil up there, very very high average. They put Nimmo on there, very high on base percentage. Now with Lindor, they can put him in that one spot and guarantee. You know. Every day they're getting at least a leadoff runner for the power of the order. You know, the Pete Alonso, Dominic Smith, J.D. Davis, McNeil, Conforto. You know, this team, the James McCann, this team is going to be very solid up and down the order. And this has put this number one spot in their lineup a very, very, very strong position. And, you know, it's... It's very, it's something that the Mets have desperately needed. Lindor, it also balances out the lineup, something that they've needed massively. Again, a leadoff hitter, a switch hitter, you know, something that the Mets don't have many of. So, you know, it's a very, very good player. And if you think Lindor's not top 10, I think that you are completely wrong. His defense and his offense at shortstop, a position that is a premium for offense. I mean, the last few years we have gotten some new guys up here, but again, Francesco Lindor is a top 10 player in baseball. I mean, especially with the glove, the speed, you know, the all-around player, the smile and everything. It's hard to not have him rank top 10. I mean, I know he did have a down year, but, you know, he's going to bounce back. 2020 weird year, as Giraffe Nick Mark says, we're going to chalk it up to that. All right, the Mets also in this trade got starting pitcher Carlos Carrasco, a 33, almost 34-year-old pitcher uh, from Cleveland. He has played like seven years in the big leagues. Uh, in 2020, coming back from, and you know, recovering from cancer, what a story that is for uh, Carrasco. He had a 2.91 ERA in 12 games, 68 innings pitch, struck out 82 and a 1.20 whip. Now, Carrasco, his career has a 3.77 ERA in 195 starts, a 1,242 innings pitch, and has 1,305 strikeouts and a career whip of 1.196, a career war of 21.4. Carrasco in 2017 finished fourth in the Cy Young voting, did by far the best year of his career. He pitched 200 innings, had a 3.29 ERA, and had a 1.095 whip while striking out 226 batters. Carrasco, again, from a span from 2014 to 2018, very, 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 very solid pitcher. Again, 2019, he did have leukemia, so again, his starts were down. He is a workhorse, and his production was down, but bouncing back so strong in 2020 in 12 games, 2.91 ERA. Arguably, if that was a 162-game season, he probably had a very, very solid uh, chance to have Comeback Player of the Year award, which I think he might have had. I'm not sure. I don't remember that word. It's kind of... You know, it's kind of a lackluster award for a lot of people. But, you know, again, it could have, you know, arguably placed in the Cy Young voting. I mean, 2.91 ERA with that, having a 60-game schedule. Again, you won't have the inflated ERA that his teammate had. And Bieber, again, very solid. So, you know, Carrasco overall, I mean, 
career, he has an ERA just in the threes. It's very solid. 2014, 255. And every year behind that or after that is like ERA in the low th uh, three. So, I mean, overall, Carrasco, a very solid pitcher. And Carrasco, too, is a very on a very cheap, you know, deal for someone with a three ERA, considering that Odorizzi will probably get around $13 million. Carrasco is going to make $12 in uh, 2021. Uh, 12 million in 2022 and has a 14 million dollar club option with 3 million buyout in 2023. So again, you know, very very solid considering if they went out and got Oda Rizzi, he would cost you probably 10 million. Rick Porcello costed 10 million dollars last year when they signed him. So I mean, Carrasco is art is miles better, and you only get him for him for like two million more than uh, Porcello did. I think that is a steal of a deal. Now moving on to what the Indians got in this package. Starting off with Ahmed Rosario, 2020 at 252, four home runs, 15 RBIs, did not steal a base and hit a 643 OPS. Career-wise, 268 hitter, 32 home runs, uh, 705 OPS, stolen 50 bases. He's uh, played four years in the big leagues. In 2019, he was a very solid player, 287 average, uh, 15 home runs, stole thir uh, no, stole 19 bags. However, did get caught stealing 10 times for a lead for the league lead struck out 124 times and walked only 31 times again terrible defense out there in the field has a war of 2.3 so rosario he was formerly a top prospect in baseball and you know for me with looking at rosario i think he definitely does have the potential his power is coming there you know his he's definitely a solid pit, uh, hitter he can hit for a lot of average you know his bat he is more of an average hitter did start to hit for some power However, with Rosario, it is a lot of not making contact. He's he's going out up there with a pool noodle. He swings at practically everything he sees. He's like, oh, there's baseball coming at me. I'm just going to swing. He strikes out an absolute ton, way too much for a player, below average defense. So overall, the with uh, Rosario, Indians fans, I'm, you know, good luck with Rosario. Um, I've met, I when uh, first, you know, trades were starting to be talked about, I was like, you know what? Rosario needs to be that you know part of this deal. He's the shortstop that the Indians want. I think the Indians definitely can do something with Rosario. So if they get the right tools put in place for him, I definitely do think Rosario can blossom. The player, the highlight of this deal for me, uh, if you're the Indians, is Andres Jimenez. Jimenez had, uh, was a rookie last year, hit 263, three home runs, 12 R RBIs, stole eight bases in only. Um, 49 games. So I actually played a lot more games than I anticipated. But yeah, stole eight bases. Hit had a 3.33 OPS or 3.33 on base percentage, 732 OPS. And man, some of the plays that Jimenez made out in the field this last year were insane. Jimenez for me was looking like this. As as a rookie, I was like looking at him like, wow, I am drafting this year to be my shortstop in fantasy next year. He has all the tools. He's still only 22 years old, so he is going to grow into that body. He's going to get some power on him. So overall, I think Jimenez is definitely the, the the headline of this deal. Jimenez is looking, projecting to me. I think he'll hit around 300, probably around 10, 15 home runs. I don't see much more than that. He can easily steal 30 plus bases. So I mean, very very solid player in Jimenez. You you guys are getting good defender at shortstop. I think great replacement for Lindor. I don't know if you guys are gonna play him at second base. Or shortstop again. You guys have Rosario and Jimenez. So overall, Jimenez, I definitely think is the headline of this deal. I'm sad as a Mets fan to lose Jimenez, but again, looking at what we're getting, we're getting Carrasco and Lindor. Like you can't be mad with that. The Indians also with this trade are getting starting pitching, starting pitcher Josh Wolf and Isaiah Green, both uh, players that Brody Van Wagen and drafted. Again, it looks like to me the Mets they're trying to get rid of anything that Brody Van Wagen and did almost. You know the player that they he drafted. I don't know if they have full confidence in them. Uh, Isaiah Green was definitely a player that uh, was said to be on the Indians' radar during the draft, and the Indians overall in this trade getting him and Josh Wolf, starting pitcher, came uh, in the 2019 draft. Second round, I believe it is. So, you know, another, you know, solid pitcher, you know, with some potential. So the Mets overall, I think, clear winners of this trade. As a Mets fan, I am absolutely ecstatic. I'm super pumped up for this trade. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Again, hit that like button and subscribe. Come back for more videos coming soon, and I'll see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching.